Hello, Dr. G here from naturalfoodsdiet.org. Here in my hand, I have a meter that tests radio frequency waves. They're also called microwaves, and they're emitted from the different kinds of technologies that we use today. Examples are your Wi-Fi, cell phone, cell tower, and many other types of wireless communications, such as baby monitors, the new exercise monitors that are out there, and also Bluetooth. Today, I want to tell you why I think that you should consider investing in buying a radio, radio frequency meter. I have here one that's called the Acoustic Meter, which is made by a company in the United Kingdom. I bought this one on Amazon.com for about 400 bucks. Here we have values that tell us our exposure it goes from one to 100,000, and this is the average microwatts per meter squared. And then the peak is in volts per meter, and it goes from 0 0.02 up to 6. So they're both important, but the average microwatts per meter squared is the cutoff that was set by the scientists that were involved in the bioinitiative report in 2012 that stated that biologic effects begin to occur at about 3.4 microwatts per meter squared of the average power intensity. So basically you want your exposure below five. Well, five is the second reading in the bottom of this column. column. The bottom of the column is one. So if you make it to five, you're above what's considered safe as far as biologic effects. So if you're at five, you're exposing yourself to possible harm. Now I've made other videos about what those biologic effects are, but in my opinion, they're one of the causes of our dramatic increase of diseases that we're seeing now, like autoimmune disease, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety, obesity. You get the picture. The problem with radio frequency radiation is that we don't hear it or sense it. So most people don't believe it could possibly be harmful. Now with this particular meter, and one of the reasons I like it, is there's a volume control. And what you can do is turn up the volume and then put it next to an RF emitting device and you'll notice a crazy amount of static that you get. The same kind of static you get on your AM radio when you're not in tune with the station. If you hear the static, you can begin to understand the effects of these waves, and their effect is on a subatomic level. If you read Jim Alkahili's new book, Life on the Edge, The Coming Age of Quantum Biology, you'll see how, how life is based on subatomic quantum effects. And when you realize that, you realize that this static could definitely have an effect on your health and your functioning. So having a meter gives you a tangible measurement that you can see and you can hear. You see it by the flashing lights that we'll demonstrate in just a second. You can compare the reading in your home, and, you know, get a reading in your home, and then take the meter out in the woods. Out in the woods, it's silent, and there's little green dots at the bottom. I can't find little green dots in my house. We're being bombarded by the static and it's affecting our functioning as living beings. Now remember, the effect is subatomic and it's not thermal. In other words, it's not heat. The thermal effect is what the government has used to develop the safety standards that are now in place. They're worthless. It's the non-thermal effects that have been shown in thousands of studies, and they definitely affect the biological functioning of plants and animals, including humans. Now, in this video, I want to tell you how a meter can alert you to possible problems in your environment. All right, I'm going to turn it on as a demonstration, and here we'll see what the baseline levels are in my home. Now, unfortunately, my home isn't that great. My neighbors have Wi-Fi. My neighbors have smart meters. There's a nearby cell tower. So I don't have total silence in my house. 
here the microwatts per meter squared is a pretty bad reading of 100. Okay, I don't know, I gotta, and here you can hear it. So it's way above, well now it's a little better. It's down around five and 10, that's what I expected. All right, I'm gonna turn a wireless Wi-Fi on right now. Okay, it's on. And let's see if it has any effect here. Okay, before I was at five and up to 50, but now it's jumping around 1,000, 2,500, 5,000, way, way above the 3.4 microwatts per meter squared. And the peak is, is maxing out at six. So I'm gonna turn this thing off and turn off the Wi-Fi so I can make it through my presentation here. So the advantages of having a meter is that if new devices come into your world, you can sense it. Now I noticed an increase in my readings in my house, so I went on a search to try to find the source. It's kind of like an Easter egg hunt, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. So what did I find? I found that the power company had put a smart meter to replace my old analog meter for measuring power consumption in the home. Well, smart meters emit radio frequency waves, and my acoustic meter picked it up, so I was able to identify it. So what I do, I notified the power company that I wanted that damn thing taken out of my house or off the outside of my house. And to their credit, they removed it without any other questions. I was very happy. So if you have an RF meter, you can regularly test and see what new things have cropped up in your environment. Another time I was testing the east side of my house, my kids' rooms, and there was a high reading. Again, the Easter egg hunt, it revealed a stealth cell tower that had been erected near my home. So I moved my office to the other end of the house. I moved where I sleep to the other end of the house. The kids are gone, so they're not being exposed. But what were my options at this point when you find a stealth cell tower? Well, you could move. Uh, another option, you could bomb the cell tower. But I thought about that and I thought, well, let's see, I'll probably wind up in prison. And in prison, there's probably more EMF than I have here in my house, uh, maybe. You can also try shielding. And if you have a meter, you can see if your shielding was effective by measuring again. And then you can lend it to your friends. Of course, you don't wanna lend it to those people you don't like, because then they'll have to go to the hospital and they'll have to get put on drugs and they'll have to have procedures, and they'll probably die early so that they're out of your life. Just kidding. As the 4G is rolled out, it's gonna be harder to hide from high levels of radio frequency radiation that's above the recommended safe level for biology. But again, if you have a meter to test, it can be very helpful. You can set your meter next to your cell phone Place your cell phone on the 4G, then start searching the internet on your phone. You'll be astounded at the level of radio frequency exposure that you get. It's gonna be way above normal cell phone use and way above the recommended limit. Now, when you see this, you hear those nasty sounds, you see the blinking lights, you'll think twice about surfing the internet on your cell phone in 4G. And if you do it anyway, then you're gonna enter into my world, the world of doctors, the world of pain, the world of drugs and procedures, and you'll possibly check out of life on earth early. Another benefit of owning a meter is you can be the go-to EMF expert in your tribe and you'll help the people in your tribe stay healthy and avoid the ravages of chronic diseases that are exploding now in the United States and around the whole earth. And if you got a meter and you use it, 
you'll gain a better understanding of electromagnetic fields in general. So in my view, getting a meter to measure your EMF exposure is one of the best investments you can make for your health. Now this particular meter is for radio frequency waves. It's the RF meter model AM-10 made by EM Fields Acoustimeter. Remember, to fully test your environment, you need an RF meter, but you also need a meter that measures electric fields and magnetic fields. It's also good to have a meter that measures dirty electricity. I'll go over the other meters that I use soon in a future blog. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel.